but it looks like maladministration, which is not a not a crime, but it means that the NAC um, possibly hasn't considered all of the relevant factors that it needed to in its decision, or even might have made an error of fact or law, which are two of the prongs, for example, that the uh, independent investigator, Gal Finesse, can look into under the legislation. So a lot of people were like, well, what is the point, myself included, of having a National Anti-Corruption Commission um, with the chief function under 17A of detecting corruption if it's not willing um, to make a finding, one way or the other, of whether corrupt conduct actually happened uh, in Robodem. And that seems to be the substance of most people's complaint. And even though a royal commissioner had deliberately given the NAC the opportunity to take action here, it didn't see the point. Why exactly did it walk away from this or, or try to walk away at least? So under its legislation, the, the NAC, um, whatever we want to call it, has the ability to take into account other investigations and they seem to have relied on another integrity investigation having taken place or taking place with the Australian Public Service Commission investigation into some staff involved in Robodet, not politicians, just public servants. And they seem to have uh, relied on that to say, well, we don't want to duplicate any of that work. We think the Royal Commission did a really good job um, in terms of its fact-finding mission and, you know, we can't apply penalties or sanctions beyond, and this is really important, they say beyond a finding of corrupt conduct, there's nothing we can do. But, of course, that is the chief power of a corruption commission is to make that finding of corrupt conduct, particularly when it comes to public officials who are not captured by the Australian Public Service Commission. And we know at least one of them is not a public servant, i.e. they were probably a minister. Uh, and there are other inquiries happening behind the scenes, of course, but the commissioner of the Royal Commission, Catherine Holmes, who's a former Sur Supreme Court justice, um, head of the Supreme Court in Queensland, deliberately asked for a delay of seven days to her Royal Commission report so she could specifically make referrals to the NAC and she's a fine legal mind and she didn't do that just because she thought it would be fun. She did it for a reason. And the NAC has kind of handballed it now to the Australian Public Service Commission of all places, which is, I think I made the point earlier, uh, like being flogged with a, a wet lettuce leaf. And now we have uh, the NAC's inspector, Gail Finesse, who's conducting an independent inquiry into this decision not to uh, continue the investigations. What, what powers does she actually have? I mean, could we see this NAC investigation reopened? Uh, we could. I mean, in theory, I don't think she has the power to tell them to, you know, reopen an investigation, but she does have the power to find that they um, erred in their decision making. She even has the power to to make a finding of corrupt conduct in relation to the NAC, um, which she can also refer to other investigating authorities. Ironically, she can also refer the allegation of corrupt conduct back to the NAC for investigation, which I suspect she will not be doing. Um, so there's that kind of side of things. And then there's the maladministration side of things, which doesn't require any you know, unlawful behaviour from anyone involved at the National Anti-Corruption Commission, but it does allow Gail Finesse, who is um, an incredible mind in her own right, who was, of course, uh, counsel assisting of the uh, Royal Commission into institutional responses into child sexual abuse and is currently serving as the um, independent uh, investigator at the New South Wales Independent Commission Against Corruption. So she holds this role twice, one for New South Wales and one for the feds. And she's she's a tough mind. And so she has the power to say, look, you made, you, you stuffed up. You made a mistake here. And it, it seems like you could make that argument based on its own legislation um, that they either didn't take into account the relevant considerations, they made an error of judgment in law or fact, um, or even that they didn't communicate their reasons properly. The, the reasons are, you know, for a transparency body, essentially to put out a statement and say, we're not going to take any further questions. It's quite remarkable. We don't know which deputy commissioner made the decision um, after it was delegated by the commissioner, Paul Brereton, presumably because of potential conflict of interest, which he flagged, possibly military related. Uh, we don't know which deputy commissioner made the decision. They won't take any questions about it. Gal Finesse has quite a broad remit to now ask questions about, well, did they do their job properly? And Rick, we're, we're quite a long way into the weeds at this point. I mean, we now have an inquiry into a decision not to pursue an investigation off the back of a royal commission. So can you just take us back to basics for a second? I mean, this is fundamentally about an illegal government scheme that in some cases led to people to take their own lives. Why is it important for us to see accountability at an individual level uh, in this case? 
I, I'm actually really glad you asked that question because people also refer to the fact that there was a settlement, right? But that was the government paying back the money it had stolen from people to the tune of $1.7 billion plus $100 million, $112 million in compensation, which is just the interest amounts um, that was accrued on that money that the government had stolen. It didn't pay compensation for the lives that were lost. It didn't pay compensation for the people who died under duress while having a robot hanging over their head or their family members or the, the loss of work, the breakdown in relationships, the people who experience more violence. So the Royal Commission, uh, the Robert Royal Commission, is the closest we have come to some sense of justice. But of course, Commissioner Holmes is um, a fantastic jurist in her own right, but also a conservative one who knew that her role was to find the facts and then refer on to other appropriate bodies for investigations. There are other investigations happening. We don't know whether the criminal or civil ones will ever amount to anything. Um, so the knack is a really important kind of touchstone in this whole saga where we know we know people broke the law. We know that they acted in breach of public trust, which is one of the definitions of corruption um, by public officials under the NAC. And we know all of these things, but we haven't got the imprimatur of a commission saying, do you know what, X, Y, Z, these six currently anonymous people may or may not have involved in, um, been involved in this corrupt, corrupt conduct. And that is a tag that for the efficient an effective use of public resources and public trust going forward decades into the future, people who stuff up right, um, in directly or deliberately or otherwise should have consequences attached to that behaviour. And the NAC, having been set up apparently with the entire purpose of looking into corruption, has been given on a platter, possibly one of the most serious and systemic examples of corruption in public office in its first year and has decided to do nothing with it. That is the antithesis of accountability, I would have thought. Well, we'll see what happens uh, with this inquiry into the decision. I will have to leave it there, but thank you so much. Rick Morton, Senior Reporter at The Saturday Paper, really appreciate your insights. Thanks, Ruby.